This exclusive message at Expona is brought to you by Stark Sound and Ever Solo. Okay, so I'm at the Stark Sound and Ever Solo room, and uh, I have Scott here. Uh, he has a few new products mm -hmm. he, he's eager to announce. Oh, yeah. Um, but before we go over all of the new ones, if mm -hmm. you have to pick one, what would be the concentration that you would like people to really, you know, kind of mm -hmm. experience at the show? You know, I think the most exciting thing we're going to be showing this year are the Beta 7s, mm -hmm. our bookshelf speakers. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've developed them uh, in honor of our 15 year anniversary and uh, yeah, the timing was right with the show. We're glad that we have an opportunity to audition them for all the people. I briefly heard them, right? Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. like impressed with the overall balance mm -hmm. it had. I think mm -hmm. at one point I asked if the subwoofers weren't on. And of course those were your subwoofers that's you know not on. And right, yeah, they were actually unplugged. Yeah. Just so, I was yeah. pretty mm -hmm. amazed by the fullness mm -hmm. of the sound. Um, and the overall balance was quite nice with mm -hmm. like, you know, sparkly detail and so mm -hmm. on that kind of synergistically worked well with the DMP A6 and mm -hmm. the A8 sound. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, was that by like, is that, was that intentional or? I mean, we've been working with Ever Solo for, for quite, quite some time and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we wanted a, a cost effective speaker. Um, you know, we have a lot of high end products as well, but we've learned a lot from developing those and we want to implement those into a more uh, kind of budget friendly uh, speaker. So we decided to look into doing a pair of bookshelves. We do a lot of multi-channel products, mm -hmm. uh, but this is really kind of our first foray into doing a two channel setup, which we have more products in development right now, mm -hmm. but the betas are the first ones for that. So, I and see. we thought it fit really well with the Ever Solo products, you know, the pricing, uh, the dynamics of it, uh, the performance, um, it seems like it's a really good match with, with their products. Because like what I heard right, what, like right away I noticed mm -hmm. was like was taking good advantage of mm -hmm. the sound um, profile and the strengths of the mm -hmm. A8 and the A6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, as someone who has reviewed both, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, these speakers, you know, I think they really wanted to, you know, um, you know, sell it to people mm -hmm. that have the A6 and the A8. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, that brings me to the question: What, mm -hmm. what is the price point? Everybody's been asking us that, yeah. right? So right now, the introductory price point is seven hundred and fifty dollars for the pair. For, and, for these? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's seven hundred and fifty, and we also uh, we have stands that we've developed specifically for them too, and those are two hundred and forty for the pair. Okay. So for about a thousand bucks, you can. These stands are these stands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ones that I see here. Yeah, the stand, room. the stands that, that, that are right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how much again? Two hundred and forty for the stands altogether. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that's. That's the very unexpected. Well, yeah, it, it is un yeah. unexpected, but you know, we want something that you know makes them very desirable, and I mean, it's it's kind of a deal you can't pass up. Yeah. But just because they're priced at that price point doesn't mean that we compromised any of the uh, technology or anything that we put into them. So, uh, but we feel like it matches well with some of the other products with with Ever Solo that we've been working with. And actually, the timing was really good. We were already working mm. on these bookshelves uh, when we were first developing a relationship with with Ever Solo, and they were telling us a little more about what they were doing, what we were doing. We're like, wait a minute, we've got a couple of products here that are really gonna. Uh, work well together. So, you know, we kind of started off talking about that and uh, the timing was really good. Because from what I heard, I think it just pairs really well with the A6 and the A8 mm -hmm. um, because the performance I heard does mm -hmm. not equal what your, the price point doesn't make sense <laughs> um, currently, especially the stands. I really like well, the stands. <clears throat> as I mentioned, it's an introductory price, right? Yeah. So we're starting to introduce these to the market. I'm mm. not saying that it's always going to be at that price point. More than likely, it's, it's going to rise. But, um, you know, for our Stark Sound fans and Ever Solo fans, we wanted to, you know, have a, a really good deal for them to get them excited, to get the product out there, to get, you know, some more buzz and interest. So. As someone that just heard the speakers with mm -hmm. no clue as to the technological mm -hmm. side, um, that's the first thing that stood out to me mm -hmm. was the you know good synergy between the A6 and the A8. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, you know, in terms of technology, what is special? If you had to pick a few mm -hmm. uh, key points, what is special about the speaker? Um, okay, so I think okay, first of all, it's a two-way speaker, mm -hmm. right? And there's only one crossover, mm -hmm. and that was really important for us. So. Uh, the, the tweeter is actually a 1.15 inch tweeter, not a 1 inch, 1.15. So that actually allows us to lower the crossover. The crossover is 1,850 hertz. So that kind of creates a very natural transition to the woofer, the 7 inch woofer, mm. beta 7, 7 inch woofer. 
Um, so I think that's probably one of the, the biggest selling points of it. So really crisp dialogue. There's a very robust bass, as you heard when you walked in, right? Yeah. You were asking if the bass, if our subs were turned on, they weren't. Yeah. So um, that allowed us, the, the larger tweeter actually allowed us to kind of lower uh, the bass on, on, the woof, on, the sub, on the woofer, so. Interesting. Yeah. You know, yes, the bass was very impressive mm -hmm. and you know, I, I had to ask mm -hmm. to make sure that mm -hmm. no subs were turned yeah. on. Um, and I was hearing these speakers mm -hmm. by themselves. But another thing that stood out to me is, especially in, in that track that we played, mm -hmm. like um, something like the Red Handed, mm -hmm. right? The spatial cues and information mm -hmm. was like very like delicate and sweet sounding mm -hmm. to me, right? And one of the kind of the criticisms I had with the A6, not so much mm -hmm. the A8, was that mm -hmm. it was a little bit, you know, rough around the edges with the A6. Mm -hmm. um, but this is like the opposite of that. It's like yeah. totally smooth, but at the same time, like details like were very, very sweet mm -hmm. sounding and, 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 and um, floaty. Mm -hmm. So um, my question would be like, it, is that has to do with the waveguide? Because when I first saw it, I thought that might be something that was unique to the speakers. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, on the waveguide, um, so we tool all the face plates ourselves okay. in the house, right? Yeah. So and and also as I was mentioning before, is we're a vertically integrated company, so we have our own factory. So mm -hmm. we build everything in the house as well. So it allowed us to experiment during the developmental phase of you know trying to figure out what this bookshelf you know speaker wanted to be. But yeah, you know, we, the ripples in there actually kind of creates a more rigid faceplate to it. So it's not just for aesthetics, although it looks nice, you yeah. know, uh, but it also has a performance value to it as well. We have three finishes for, for, for the beta. So we have the European uh, white oak, and then we have the ebony black, and then we have the Aoki flaxen, which is more of a gray color. The frequency range in these is really great, right? So we're going from 39 hertz all the way up to 23 kilohertz. You know, a lot of speakers start to roll off around the 20. So really, you're starting to hear a little bit of distortion around 17 or 18. So uh, we really wanted something that, that goes beyond that. But the base, I think, is really the most impressive. So uh, the cabinets are actually 13 and a half inches deep. So we made it um, a little bit deeper. So we kind of uh, control some of the reflections within the cabinet. It's also ported as well. So. Um, the driver itself, the seven inch driver, was probably the main piece of all this that we spent the most time on. It's a carbon fiber um, assembly, it's like a sandwich. So we've got four uh, layers all together. There's a, uh, a resin layer on the outside, then we've got the carbon fiber layer, which is the second layer that gives it a lot of rigidity. And we have a foam layer beneath that that helps with the dampening. And then there's a glass fiber layer on the back. And that kind of controls some of that reflecting that happens sometimes in these bookshelf speakers. So we wanted to control that, minimize that. All together, all those things and the crossover I was just talking about gives it a really deep bass sound, which you really don't hear from bookshelf speakers this size. So it's kind of batting over their, you know, their level. So. And you guys manufacture your own own drivers yeah, in house. We, everything in house, and that's one thing too. We've we've always done that, right? Mm -hmm. So when we met a long time ago, right. I kind of mentioned that to you. But we have our own factory. So and drivers are really our, our specialty. You know, we do a lot of assemblies. We also do amplifiers and things like that too. But drivers is where we first started. And yeah, the reason I asked that question because you know for your other products mm -hmm. that I have seen mm -hmm. and talked about you know, with you, mm -hmm. it makes sense for you to you know, make your own drivers and mm -hmm. the price, sense, price mm -hmm. range makes sense for mm -hmm. that to happen. Mm -hmm. But this price point, I thought maybe maybe they skimmed out this time. Yeah, I know. Well, we were talking about that a, a yeah. little bit before, right? Um, you know, we don't, we don't come up with the price point first on a product. We kind of figure out what the product wants to be and we listen to it, we do our prototypes. Um, and then we're able to develop, you know, we, um, you know, same thing with the subwoofers and the amplifiers. Um, you know, the specs are important, of course. Everybody loves reading the specs and um, a lot of decision making happens with that. But for us, what the most important thing is at the end of the day is we want it to sound good. So we listen to everything first and then we develop the price point and the specs kind of come after that as mm -hmm. well. I really like to ask, cause, cause you, only because you mentioned it, mm -hmm. right? I really like to ask um, a not a rebuttal question, mm -hmm. but you know, a question when uh, a manufacturer or rep says, "Oh, you know, we wanted to create a good sound." Mm -hmm. What is that good sound to Stark Sound? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it comes down to a big dynamic range. I think mm -hmm. is important, low distortion, mm -hmm. and I think those are things that we really try to dial in when we're developing something. Mm -hmm. So, bass is a big. Yeah, 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 bass. I mean, it's, um, 
I think with any speaker, you know, that, that really kind of carries uh, the rest of the performance. So um, I think that's one of the most important aspects of any speaker design, you know. Now talking about bass, mm -hmm. yes, the, the speakers are definitely impressive mm -hmm. for the price. I was mm -hmm. blown away mm -hmm. when you, because we didn't actually discuss the price. No, no, no. We, we were, we, I was asking you what you yeah, thought it should you be, asked right? Me and I <laughs> and I was convinced that it's going to mm -hmm. be around like, a, you know, $1,500, $2,000 uh -huh. price point, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's, that caught me off guard. Yeah. But, but I have to say, when we plugged in the speakers behind it, uh -huh. which I told you, you know, it intrigued me a lot. It was mm -hmm. like staring at me with those speakers. Yeah, yeah they're, they're hard to ignore, right? Yeah. When you walk in. And um, actually, Lily over here, mm -hmm. you know, told me, oh, you know, the bookshelf speakers sound better. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? No way, right? And then when, when we switched, I was like the smile oh. on my face, you know, uh, like the sound was like just right up my alley. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, that's your P series, and you yeah. know, I have, I, I know you guys had this lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my first time hearing mm -hmm. it or seeing it in person. Um, you mentioned that this is going to be now sold in North America, where yeah. it was not before. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're in officially introducing it this the, the, this year. Um, we've had the speakers completed for about a year and a half, but we really wanted to test them in different environments and s situations first. And we didn't want to uh, introduce them until we felt like they were ready. The beauty of it was is that uh, we built them and then we test them out. We didn't have to change anything. You know, everything sounded great. So, you know, Exponent was coming up and, uh, you know, we felt like this was a good time to introduce them uh, to North, North America. Yeah. yeah. And I'm assuming they were meant to be played with the grills on because when we had the grills off, yes, it was it was still very like impressive, mm -hmm. but I had to put the grills on yeah. and, and try it that way because of the, you know, um, the, the baffles inward mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, yeah. I'll show it in the B-roll to make it more mm -hmm. sense. Um, but when the grills went on, I mean, I was like, yeah, this is, this is crazy speakers. Uh -huh. Like, these are speakers that I really want for myself. Yeah. Um, so what, what's, what's so special about this speaker? Mm -hmm. I mean, the very first thing that sticks out to me is the ribbon tweer mm -hmm. yeah. and the horn-ish mm -hmm. waveguide. Yeah, yeah, so, so we actually built it. I mean, it's based on older technologies. Those patents ran out a long time ago, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a very uh, efficient uh, you know, type of tweeter. And uh, we wanted to um, you know, combine that with, with, with a horn type uh, housing on that. And um, you know, in our initial testing on those, it really sounded great. We were really impressed with it, um, and we wanted something different with with, with the P series. And you know, these these are meant to be played loud, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the maximum um, uh, SPL on these is 134 dB, which is louder than you ever going to want to play them. Mm -hmm. But that really raises up the sweet spot for you know most most playback and reproductions. Uh, but you know, it's it's these are really set up not for rooms this size. But of course, we want to show them off to everybody. But it's really for larger home theaters yeah. and commercial applications. A lot of custom installers would be interested in these. Um, you know, it's 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 got um you know it's got a price point on them that is really for a certain type of de demographic who wants that kind of performance. Uh, but you know, we have a whole line. You know, the P7 is just part of it. We also have a P5. We have a P3. We have the P1. There's in walls. Uh, there's on walls. You know, ceiling channels as well. It's a really a multi uh, multi channel setup. Mm. And you mentioned that these are true three way loudspeakers. Yeah, yeah, these are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the midwoofer and the woofer? Itself? Yeah. So okay. So we we, we talked about the tweet already. Uh, you know, the the mid range is a six and a half uh, speaker cone. And then we have a 12 inch uh, woofer on that as well. And uh, they're rated to go down to 45 Hertz, um, although it has a very robust base to it, uh, but it's really meant to be played in the system. Uh, but you know, depending on how you like your setup, you know, we have it in a two channel right now, right? and it's, it's still pretty impressive. Yeah, and you know, I go to these shows and I see a lot of different products and speakers, mm -hmm. but what made me really smile was because you know, when I first bought the Altec Lensing, um, you know, Voice of the Home Theater mm -hmm. speakers, I thought this would be the sound I was uh -huh. getting, and right. and I'm getting it here in much much smaller package, uh -huh. um, and it, it just you know with a little bit more crispiness and, and detail. Yeah. 
um, a bit more crunchiness on mm-hmm. the top because of that you know, ribbon tweeter. Mm-hmm. And the way it projects, you know, I know you mentioned that these speakers are for larger rooms, yeah. mm-hmm. but the way it projects, yeah. it's just it's just totally different right. from even you know the little guys beside you, mm-hmm. right? The way it projects yeah. into the room. Well, you know, mm-hmm. the, the horn is kind yeah. of responsible for yeah. a lot of that. And they're also on swivels, so you can yeah. actually turn that to the sweet spot wherever that you know preferred listening area is going to be yeah um so yeah i mean they're they're, they're very f- flexible speakers yeah you know, I'm, a, well. I'm a sucker for horns but yeah this is this is something <laughs> so so unique yeah. I, I really love the sound mm-hmm. of these speakers so what's powering these speakers uh, i'm glad you asked that question um, another new product for the show that we're auditioning is our a3 amplifier it's a very powerful amplifier um, it's 620 watts per channel at four ohms um, which is what these speakers are rated for. Um, and it's a three channel amp, but it also has a bridging capability uh, where you can make it two channel, which is what we've done here today. So that extra power we can filter out into both channels. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's fanless as well, mm-hmm. which is nice. It doesn't really heat up too much either. Um, uh, we've got some heat sinks that are integrated into the chassis mm-hmm. and there's ventilation on both sides. So it's, it's a very quiet amp, but it's mm-hmm. very powerful too. The Class A goes up to about 50 watts and then it'll slide into you know, an AB operation at that point. But you know, 99% of the time, whatever, uh, you know, whatever you're listening to or content you're listening to doesn't go above that anyway. So it's really, it's, it's, it's a very true Class A kind of sound if you like that kind of sound. And we do. So I actually have this unit in for review right now. Mm-hmm. And I was a bit curious about, you know, the collaboration with the yeah. Everso mm-hmm. um, and you know the little amplifier. Mm-hmm. When I first got it, I thought it looks like the Stark Sound, you know, Fiera 4 amplifier, yeah. but like in a much more compact yes. package. Mm-hmm. So can you tell me a little bit about the Fiera 4? Uh, not the Fiera 4, sorry. Yeah. No, the, the F2. Yeah, F2. no, they're, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're basically the, the, the same amplifier, but um, the, the F2 was developed uh, in conjunction with, with Eversolo. So, you know, this one, you know, we had already kind of developed a relationship. Uh, we kind of understood one another's products and we're like, yeah, we can do uh, an amplifier for your setup. So it's basically the F2 is basically the F4, but it's, it, it, two it's channel a, a two channel. Yeah. So, you know, it's the same 280 watts per, per channel. Um, F4 ohms, and uh, we have the copper beryllium connectors in the back. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of been upgraded for uh, an amp of, at, at that price point. Um, you know, it's it's a switch type power supply, and uh, yeah, you know, price points really nice on that too. And you know, it, it's the marriage between uh, the F2 and the Eversolo products is you know, they're kind of meant for one another, and they were so. And um, the subwoofers. Do you want to talk about those at all? Yeah, yeah, sure. These are SW15s. We've we've had these these out for a while. These are more um, kind of a, a, a more approachable price wise, um, and we've had these now for I guess about two years. And we sell these online direct, so anybody can 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 get them. Um, and know, they're active subwoofers, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah they are active uh, sub- subwoofers. And I think probably the one of the uh, main advantages of these it's it's a very compact box. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a 15 inch subwoofer. Um, this is actually smaller than some 12 inch subwoofer ca- yeah. cabinet. So, you know, when you're trying to, um, you know, consider the real estate in a living room, uh, you know, these are, you know, much more compact. Uh, the amplifier is 470 watts um, and goes up to 900 peak. So, um, so yeah, no, they're- Class D amplifier? Yeah, yeah, Class yeah, 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 Class D amplifier. Um, and, you know, we've had some customers, you know, like one, somewhere like two. Uh, we've had some reviewers really appreciate, you know, like a quad setup, you know, mm-hmm. four of them. And they're, they're, they're very affordable, right? Yeah, so the more you add, the less yeah, yeah. notes mm-hmm. and yeah. 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 So are the softwares, uh, or the ones that, he- that are here, mm-hmm. are they ported or sealed? These are sealed, yeah. Uh, but uh, this past year, we did introduce a ported version of it, which is the SW15P. So, um, and it's actually a, a slotted port instead of a, a, a circular port. And, you know, we tried doing, um, we also experimented with, you know, like a round port, a more traditional port type of uh, unit. Uh, but we felt that, that the, the slot version, um, it just sounded a lot better. And uh, the performance was much higher than, than the other um, prototypes that we were developing at the time. Scott, thank you so much. Thank um, you, Jay. I mean, lots of new products here mm-hmm. and lots to take in. Uh, room 708, if you're at Expona, then check it out. And uh, hopefully this video actually releases during the Expona time. Oh, and I will say, if you own the DMPA6 or the A8 or have considered it, mm-hmm. definitely 
come by this room because yeah. you gotta hear these white speakers. The syner synergistically, it works mm -hmm. well, and you'll understand what I'm talking about when you hear the speakers. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, thank you for having me, Scott, and answering all the questions. Yeah, that's and great. we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank <music> you.